one. Hey, how's it going, everyone? This is um, Angel Lopez and Stephen Kaisar with Design Kitchen, where we provide inspiration for uh, innovation, inspiration for innovation. Um, so we want to welcome you to episode four, where, um, you know, the whole point of this podcast is basically to make engineering fun. Um, and, you know, we want to inspire future generations and help people connect their ideas into actions and kind of show the way we would go about it. Or if we're pursuing any kind of ideas, we, we like to cover that as well. Um, yeah, we'll come up with a bunch of ideas from here, here and there. Um, we'll have, you guys might have some ideas. So send those to us. We will pursue our own ideas. And like, like many of you, we have plenty of ideas always there's always an idea bouncing around in our head like we just want to this is our like a way for us to talk about it and some of them most of them we won't do anything on them but it's just fun to talk about some of them will be excellent ideas and either maybe some of you guys will pursue them maybe we will um so it's just reach out let us know if you have any ideas of your own and if you want us to talk about them or if you want just want help developing your idea then definitely we can grab, absolutely help with that too um, so this week, um, Stephen, you want to go into some of the ideas or some of the progress from the things that we spoke about last week. I think you had, um, you know, one, one, one thing you mentioned, I guess, before we start, I wanted to bring up something real quick. Um, I mentioned a website and contact information last week, and now we have the website fully operational. So you can go to designkitchen.org. And there you can find a list of all of our, our um, latest episodes. Um, we're going to have some apparel or like things that we can come up with, or if we design anything that's kind of cool, we can, you know, like 3D print it or CNC it or something and put it up on the site for, for sales. So we're going to have a little, we have a little section there. Um, along with that, you know, people can subscribe. So now there's going to be a contact form if either you wanted to maybe, you know, come on the show and talk about your product, or if you, you know, wanted to work with us or have it in something, you know, to bring up, um, there's a contact section for you too. Um, so I just wanted to bring that back. Um, so hopefully that that's, and that should be available up now for anyone that wants to go. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I love having that website up and it's pretty sweet. It's I think good to have good to have something like a, a way for everybody to kind of connect and, and somewhere to go because the thing with podcasts is actually that there's it's you have to provide like a an alternate thing like so for example like youtube they have you have comments and you can directly mm -hmm. communicate with the people or with you know the producer or the content producer and then the the audience can directly communicate there but um, not so much on podcasts, which I think is, it'll probably come, but what, but it's not really the point of podcasts. Mm -hmm. So it's great to have that website as a place now, for people to connect. Yeah, now that you brought it up, um, we do have a Facebook group too. Um, so that's a good way, I think, to build a community where people could jump on yeah. there. Yeah. Hey, you know, actually, an idea that I was thinking about this week was... I would like to start working on, I've been listening to a bunch of podcasts. I, mean, I listen to podcasts all the time. It's either, either an audiobook or it's a podcast when I'm driving. So I, yeah, yeah. it's about a 30 minute commute each way. Yeah. Um, so what I was thinking I, as I was listening, a pretty common theme about among the kind of a higher end podcasts is they have like these, they have like a, a recorded pre-recorded introduction and they have like some kind of little music or some kind of tunes going. And then they, to kind of transition between different things and and, and then they have like a, basically an intro and an outro and i think it'd be really cool to get something just yeah to, to add into it and i want to you know so, so let's add that in once we get to it hopefully i want to i'll start working on it right now um probably within the next week and i'll send that over to you that you take a look at it yeah yeah that works cool um so did you have any ideas um, this week from your end or something you wanted to cover from what we went over last week? Yeah, so last week I talked a little bit about, actually, I don't know, did I even talk about the, the knife project that I'm currently working on? I don't know that I brought it up in the podcast. I think we talked about it offline. But um, <laughs> I remember it. <laughs> yeah, you remember it. But anyway, basically what I'm working on is it's the utility knife. So it's just kind of a... Um, 
call it a high-end utility knife. I don't know. Utility knife is is something that's typically pictured as almost almost disposable because the blades are disposable, right? But mm. but it's actually a super useful tool. A lot of people in construction, shipping, receiving type people, you know, warehouse workers, box who deal with a lot of boxes. Mm. And then I like to carry one. I actually carry that is my my everyday carry knife that I I just like to have something because I'm ordering stuff at work all the time. So I've got a knife, a, a small knife in my pocket just for cutting open boxes. Mm-hmm. And then who doesn't get loads of Amazon boxes and various <laughs> things on their doorstep all the time, right? So it's just nice to have something convenient. And and so this isn't something like a crazy invention, anything new, but it's just a cool idea that I've been thinking about for a while. And I want to produce it. I want to make something because the satisfaction of coming up with an idea, making some sketches and putting it into CAD and working with machinists or machining it yourself, which in my case, that would be me. I would, I definitely want to machine this myself, but I'll be 3D printing with the 3D printer that's right behind me. So anybody who's watching on YouTube, we can see it back there. But um, yeah, so I'll be working on that thing up this, I don't know. I don't necessarily, I don't really have much of a timeline for it yet, but what I've been working on this past week is creating like a project outline some industrial design sketches, which I will upload. So I'll get those uploaded on the website so people can see it. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I've been working on. And, and for future with this same product, what I want to do is I want to add like kind of an, like an ecosystem of sorts, basically make like an exacto, a little knife that uses, you know, the exacto knife blades, those, those little pointy. Yeah, yeah, in, um, in the hand. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, I want to make one of those things but make it so it's something that you could put on a keychain, right? So like a yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. spring-loaded retract <laughs> with a lock back so it's safe, so it doesn't come out in your pocket, cut your leg. <laughs> well, but be, um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, what? I, like, you know, like, um, you know, like those uh, straight racers that the barbers have where it's just foldable? Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Who w- would an X-Acto knife be if it was like foldable like that and you could replace <laughs> um, the tips, you know, almost like, mm-hmm. It had like a pre-cut thing where you just uh, put slot it into it and it has like a cover almost like um you know when you work with utility knives and they have that one quick release one that the blade comes off and then it folds in half yeah so there so i mean something like that but with an exacto knife would be awesome mm-hmm. or even like your idea but if it had an exacto knife um you know if it had like a regular knife an exacto knife and a couple um other tools you know or even like a standard phillips head because a lot of these you know like when i bought those those pocket knives those little screwdrivers aren't very effective maybe if it had like a real phillips head yeah yeah so that, and it, that's exactly what i think i want to build like i said ecosystem essentially around like i'm, I'm going to begin with the utility knife we use a standard stanley blade uh-huh. Um, I think that's kind of what they're called. They, they probably have a more technical term, but basically the Stanley style yeah, that box utility color. blade. But um, yeah, yeah so I'll start with that one. They make like, like said, little screwdrivers, little uh, like exacto knife, and then uh, um, a like a carabiner, maybe mm-hmm. just various things in this little because my utility knife is actually going to have a like a a um, lanyard loop on it and a pocket clip. So there's various ways of yeah clipping it in hanging on to it and i i really want to make it and i don't know if i um if i can make this thing work for construction and for somebody who like like me who carries it every day i don't want a big bulky construction knife because they have plenty of utility knives that are out there for construction workers swiss but those are much bigger Mm -hmm. i want to make it smaller so i can easily fit my pocket comfortably where i don't really notice it so I, I was thinking, you know, there's this huge market right now for this whole like tactical mm. outdoors type of thing. So I think if you had like a ruggedized, um, basically like a, yeah, like a ruggedized Swiss army knife in a sense, mm. um, that was still, it was unique enough to meet what you needed, but also generic enough where it could be mass produced or at least you know it might not be like a like a 20 dollars swiss army knife but it might be like one of the premium hundred dollar ones that you know have like all these nice uh bells and whistles or whatnot you know that and you know if you could always price point it where where we could even you know mass produce it yeah 
Yeah, and that's kind of my what I'm looking at is there are different ways that people are handling producing products like this and utility knife. Some people are going direct to consumer and they're looking, they, they go like crowdfunding, direct to consumer, they have their little website and they have them on Amazon and, and such. What I want to do is I would really like to go wholesale on this, put it into Home Depot, put it into Lowe's, put it, you know, yeah. and it, as well as any kind of like a hunting store where they have knives and they have, there's a, like a knife, a store specifically for knives actually at the mall here yeah. in my town. We have a, we have a knife store. All they sell is knives. Oh, really? Like cool. a <laughs> pro, but just for knives. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So what I worked on the past week is I created my, just my schedule for this product. They're not, not so much a schedule, but I broke it down into pieces. So you have mm -hmm. to, working on a product, you have to start with the big picture, understand what you're looking for in the end. Yeah. And then break it down into little pieces because if you just, if you're always just looking at that big picture, the, just the end product, mm -hmm. and if you set that as your goal, you're going to feel every week you, you aren't really making so much progress towards that big goal, but if you break it down into 20 little pieces, you might be able to get one of those things, one or two, or maybe three sometimes of those little goals done each week. And, and before you know it, you're done with it. But what I find for myself, what I've done on other projects is I end up setting, I, like I don't break it down into enough small pieces and then I get burned out because I just, I don't feel like I'm making progress because I'm not reaching the goals that I've set, but the goals that I've set are just so big that they take up, they might take a month of dedicated full time put into it. So this one, I'm really going to try to just break it down into little pieces, weekly pieces. So made some industrial design sketches. Uh, I'll be, I'll be doing a few more, but then by next week, what I'm going to have done is a CAD model, a simplified CAD model of it. And I'm going to 3, 3D print it as well. That's cool. Because what, what I was thinking, um, you know, to what you just said about these small steps, um, each time you accomplish one of those, you get like a little extra win, you know, so you're just winning on your wins. I just I just wanted to add that comment because that's kind of my my approach to do things, too. You um, have to have regular wins, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, some people some people can handle it without it. But not very many, right? Those little wins, and you just one win after another. And sometimes you won't make it, right? So sometimes yeah. your goals are a little bit too big, but that's okay. You got ninety percent of it done. So that's that, still better than none. Yeah, yeah. But is it like an NLP? They talk about how you should like aim for a hundred and ten percent if you're trying to get eighty percent or something like that. Basically, you overshoot, and um, even if you come close to it, you still win. It's still um, a win. Yeah. But yeah. you have to, the, the, the difficult thing there is actually, you have to realize, you have to be able to look back and say, it wasn't a failure. I didn't reach 110%, but I reached 80%, which is still a win. Like you have to be able to have that perspective. So yeah. I think some people get caught up and say, well, I set a goal for 110% and I didn't reach it. And you stop yeah. there and you call it a failure. No, it, it, it's not. <laughs> so it's still a win. You still yeah. got a lot done. Yeah, because the thing too, it's like if if you set a goal for eighty, you're realistically gonna accomplish like sixty five, seventy anyway. So yeah, you set one hundred and ten and reach your eighty goal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had a question. So, do you think um, having that prototype with the three D printed and everything? Do you think that let's say we made five? we can just throw these on like, I don't know about Etsy or online because of like these knife and age restrictions, but do you think that there would be like a product that would be able to just go to market in that phase? Or would that be like strictly, strictly prototype? It's going to be strictly prototype, but actually that's a good point that um, I could design because there's there's design for manufacturing it's very important yeah uh, a very important aspect of designing anything and there's different types of manufacturing it depends on are you injection molding are you machining are you 3d printing everything has its own way of slight differences in products and many times you can do one without actually modifying it to work for the other but mm -hmm. it, it's not you know to optimize you have to design for manufacture but um so i'll keep that in mind when i'm going along this is actually this, this 3D printed model that I'm shooting for next week. 
so the knife has several pieces like i don't i think it breaks down into maybe 10 different pieces if you include all the screws so that's a lot of little pieces to think about and the actual the, the difficult part about cad modeling is that you have to define the dimensions and everything has to work together whereas when you're comparing that to graphics design like say um you have you're just creating something that looks like a car but not all of the pieces don't actually have to function just perfectly so it gets really tedious getting those dimensions just perfect mm -hmm. so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create this model it's one solid piece i'm not going to include all these different pieces i will make it look like they're there but they won't actually move independently for this first model that that i'm going to have done by next week and you guys are going to hold me accountable to that but I'm, I'm thinking, why couldn't you print it in the separate pieces? And because um, I guess this is this is what I'm thinking about modularity, right? And how, you know, we'd be able to go to market with it right away. Um, mm -hmm. So let's say, right, um, you know, the knife blade, obviously, we can't go in there and, you know, forge our own. But I'm sure we can go find a manufacturer with some high quality steel blades that would, you know, keep the sharpness and, you know, we can go and procure, you know, like a box of like 50 really, really high quality blades, right? So let's say the frame of it, you wanted to use like a, a nice like CNC, you know, frame or something. Well, at the beginning, we can always hand CNC them. But then once we go into production and we can afford tooling, we could always, you know, like, like do like a die press or like a, um, you know, like a forging or something for the frame at a later point but basically if you almost design it to a point where it could literally be you know procured because you know bolts we can go on like mcmaster car find like a, a blade manufacturer online source that hit up my machine shop and mm -hmm. get like maybe five little face plates done and just you know order some bolts off of mcmaster car and now you're you're you know you can print out your sample get the feel for it and everything and just just shove like a pin in there just to hold the, the pivots, you know, where it's going to go. And, um, and that's almost like being able to prototype, but it's almost also like a hand handmade, um, you know, custom. Cause I, I was, I was looking at these chef knives. Some of these are going for a thousand dollars for like a custom forge, like chef, chef, uh, like the Japanese chef blade, you know? Oh yeah, I know those, those yeah. things, they, but there's, what I've discovered after digging into that is I've, I've, I've looked into that as well, you know, being <laughs> like, I, I enjoy knives, but I'm, I'm not going to spend right now. I'm not going to spend a thousand dollars on a knife, right? Yeah. Um, I would like to, but there are other things that kind of <laughs> demand the attention of my finances right now. Um, but basically there's, there's a reason for that cost. It, there's mm -hmm. a lot that goes into it and it's it, and um especially if they're yeah. hand rolled versus uh man, modern manufacturing mm -hmm, absolutely yeah. yeah yeah so a lot of those more expensive ones are are very labor intensive mm -hmm. uh, i know of a, a guy who's making some pocket knives and he actually they're folding pocket knives and he machines the entire thing Ooh. very precise he has very high tolerances but um so grimsmo knives sell they, they sell for right about the thousand dollar mark for a, a pocket knife my my plan it's still on my list i mean i, I need you know I, I love traveling so i'm all over the world but um yeah. i need to hit japan and i want to go in there and buy an actual sword so from what i was looking you can get like a modern one where they use like a press to to fold the steel and everything and that's like maybe three to five hundred but it, you know and then if you want like one made by hand by a traditional one i think it was like you know five to ten thousand and then you know from ten thousand and up if you want like a historical or something crazy but you know i'm happy at that five thousand mark you know as long as you get like a paper and everything and from what i was researching they actually they treat it like almost like a gun so you have to get like a registration for it and everything, but um, that's actually on my list to do is go to Japan and, you know, spend like a month out there, get some tattoos done, like traditional. Um, okay. I might get, yeah, get some tattoo work and then um, buy that sword. <laughs> so that, that's been on my list. I'm just waiting for everything to open up. <laughs> yeah. All right. That would be awesome. We'll, we'll, we'll be waiting to hear yeah, I don't know about the sword on this first trip, but I'll get it eventually. Yeah. <laughs> right yeah um but but yeah no um 
I guess what's what's your take on that um, being able to almost design for a as a custom product versus um, you know what I mean it would be like a one like not one offs but they would be almost like in that custom custom knife product where where people could like reach out to you and you know you can market it and put like um, yeah maybe instead of like you know you could call it a prototype or something and even serialize them to give it and do some kind of etching on it and be like you know prototype five or something and, and yeah. we could like literally order a finished product that's a prototype that'll be like labeled um so then later on if you go into like production or whatever using like stampings or forgings um those will just be standard um orders you know and, and i guess yeah especially if you're going into like uh the stores I mean, that, that would be great. I, I would love to be involved in this, you know, doing like some of the marketing and sell side of it. Yeah. And design too, if you need me to go hunt a deer with it or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. Um, so let us know on the progress um, once you post. Yeah. Yeah, and a quick note on just last week's idea of, of talking about a, a fish cleaning station, like a personalized fish, or you know, just something that you could have not personalized, but personal fish cleaning station, a, a table. And I went on Google and I typed it in. And I thought, oh, it, there's plenty of them. So that's not something I'm going to even look at. So I'll just go buy one for a hundred bucks. <laughs> it's not even worth your time. <laughs> nope, and really not worth my time at all. So. That's funny. <laughs> Um, let me see if I can share my screen. I usually, I haven't tried. Let me see one participant advance. Can you see my screen? No, yet. No, no. Oh, I guess. Yeah, there we go. I'm good. Yeah. Do you know which screen do you just see? Do you see a monitor or what do you see on there? Yeah, I see a YouTube. Okay, so I had this this idea, right? I'm sitting in my chair and I'm thinking, you know, um, this is uh, it's kind of tough sitting down this whole time, right? So I saw this. Do you see it? No, it's, it's a, it must be playing a different one. The screen sharing is uh, not playing. Can you see the video or no? No. No? Um, geez, let me see. You are screen sharing. So it won't share if... Let me try it again. Okay, so I had to select the window. Seems like to be working now. Yeah. You see it? Yeah. So basically... You know, with everyone working at home and whatnot, these things look pretty convenient, right? Like a wearable chair, you can just put it on and go walk and then get yeah. to work. But then, you know, I looked at the other technology, right? And then there's like these angle chairs, which are running for like 1700 bucks. Yeah. So I'm thinking like, what if I had one of these type of chairs but I could um, basically, you know, go between like a chair and a computer chair. But if it also had wheels and maybe some kind of motorization so that, you know, this were some ideas that I saw, like there's like a motorized wheel, for example. Here's more of these type of chairs, you know, but this is like 120. And then, you know, overall, the, this is a little standing up assist that helps this lady stand up. Um, but then, I, and then, you know, I was thinking too, if you make sense, certain things, well, what are the most ideal tires for carpet, right? It seems like these heavier rubber. So you make that whole thing customized for carpet, but then I saw this thing here and that looks like it's some kind of assistance tool for handicapped people. So what mm -hmm. if, right, I've, I've thought about this before, you know, what if handicapped people could have like some kind of exoskeleton that would let them, let them walk. And there's there's some companies that are doing that stuff, but to me, it's still pretty, um, you know, it's still pretty. What would you call that? Um, 
not dangerous, but I still don't want to mess with uh, anything that has to do with medical type stuff. So I'm thinking right now, people are just so lazy, right? There's like the, like the newest thing is uh, motorized bikes. Now people don't even want to pedal their bikes, right? First they had the scooters. Now it's motorized bikes. Now it's hoverboards. Well, what if we would take it another step where I could literally be sitting upright and have something just moving me around? Like it's almost like, and then if I'm, if I want to sit down, I can just sit down and it's almost like a wheelchair that I could be driving outdoors, right? And it could have like a modularity where, where one of them is like a motorized one for outdoors. Another one, how fun would it be if you could be driving some kind of like stand up type of bike chair thing, you know? So you're on the chair, but you can pedal so that you can move um, almost like a bicycle. And yeah. then, you know, I was thinking along with that, you can even have like a handicapped version, but just don't call it handicapped version where um, you're, or, or unless you can, you know, do some kind of proof or testing and get it as like a class, I forgot it was like a class three or something like that, where it's like non-invasive for the body. Okay. And maybe try to get it covered by like health insurance. But I think for me, you know, and especially because if you go look at a nice computer chair, that thing's going to run like three, 400 bucks anyway. Um, right. So I'm thinking, you know, what if you can implement like this really cool, like executive type of, um, of computer chair, but with this special frame that has like maybe a lever and some pivots so that you could turn it into an upright chair. Um, and keep the cost as low as possible, then um, at the same time, you can maybe, you know, tweak the base to have wheels that are more specialized for carpeting. And you can include like a motorized version. So you can literally just drive your computer chair around the house if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. And then you could have some outdoor ruggedized base for it. That would be like for outdoors with motors. You know, it's basically, you know, just like a, like a, um, like that hoverboard thing but on your chair now so you don't even have to stand yeah. up um i don't know i think that would be yeah. fun and i i my, my plan is to at least get some of the like mechanisms and pulley system on kind of how it would look to lift up the person as vertical and and straight as possible um yeah. so i might throw together some sketches too and and if i could do it um you know i can always just go throw a mock-up for this one too using like um you know, just some standard bars of some steel, some steel bars or something just to test uh, like a, like the mechanism of it, you know, and drill some holes on it and something and go from there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you, if you do that kind of stuff, like I, what I'm thinking, what I would like to do is, you know, you're just talking about building like prototype stuff, but I would like to be recording at least a little bit of videos and stuff. And, and maybe we'll, I don't know how we'll link that to this, but I, I would like to do that. Yeah. Um, to, just so people can see, like, if we're building a prototype, maybe the 3D printer is printing up a, a prototype part or we're, we're out in, a, in the machine shop making something. So yeah, it'd be pretty cool to, to share be, that. Um, yeah, that would make, well, we, we have a section on the website. I, I guess I didn't mentioned that it's called like the idea section or something like that where or idea blog where people could go in there and check out everything that we post okay cool cool um so that that's all i have for today how about you um steve i've well, one idea something i've been thinking about a little bit and like i'll be working on that knife project that'll really be taking up most of my time but we'll, we'll still be kind of talking about new ideas every week. And even if it's something that we don't pursue, it's just, it's, it's an idea that we kind of toss out there. We think about it. And actually what I've heard, it, it, would, it seems really interesting. I haven't actually dug into the research of it, but um, when, when you have some kind of idea or you're thinking about something, and then maybe you just, you think about it for a couple of days and you make some sketches and and you, okay, how is this mechanism going to work? Let's say it's a pretty complicated mechanism. And, and then you just don't think about it. You put those design sketches away, you kind of just forget about it. But your mind doesn't, in some cases, it probably does just completely forget about it. But in a lot of cases, it, it, your mind will continue to process things. When you sleep, when you're just, when you're working on something else, 
your mind continues to process things and you come back to it later. So you, you work on it you know, a month later, you come back to it, you work on it a little bit and then you put it away and you come back to it. You will, you will continue to have these new ideas and, and you can build on them. So when you're ready, so that's what I'm thinking. Even if I'm already busy, I'm working on a project, I have something that's taking up all my time, I'm still going to continue thinking of new ideas every week. And maybe I'll, I'll spend just a few minutes a week on these, these new ideas. But then I'll put those back into my long-term storage in my mind, right? And then when I'm sleeping, then or, or just throughout the day, maybe I'm in the shower or I'm out, on a, out working out or something, an idea will pop into my mind. And this happens so often for me mm -hmm. that this idea will pop into my mind and I'm like, duh, it, that's exactly how it's going to work. So I run, yeah, yeah. go home and I like try to scribble it down, try to get, get all this information <laughs> done as soon as I can. And then, and then again, maybe that's, maybe you made a little bit of progress with that new genius idea, but you're still not quite ready to, to really focus, put all, all your time into it. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll put it away again. And then it, it'll be back there just into long-term storage again. And so that's the, kind of the idea with the, all these new ideas every week. You can't pursue a new idea every week. Otherwise, you will have a thousand ideas that are 1% complete. A thousand, one idea that's 100% complete is better than a thousand ideas that are 1% complete. So that's what I want to work on. I want to make sure I get one idea to 100% to complete. But also I do want to have those thousand ideas that are 1% or, or like maybe not even 1%, but just like, just the thought is there and I want to have a, have it recorded and have them written down. And that's the idea kind of with that, a, a part of the website. And then with these podcasts too, we, like we're writing things down, we're, we're taking note of all of our new ideas. And then maybe once I finish this one idea, I'll get that one going and get it just streamlined, mm -hmm. jump onto the next one. So this new idea <laughs> kind of, just jumping off and explaining <laughs> where, where we're going with this, right? So like, you know, I, yeah, we have all these current ideas, new ideas, all this stuff. How do we have time to do it all? Well, we don't, but <clears throat> um, we're still going to talk about new ideas. <laughs> so a, I am a mountain biker. I, I, just, I love mountain biking among my many other hobbies that I just did seems so challenging to find time to do them all but <laughs> mountain biking is one of my what, the one that I kind of for now I picked as this is the one I'm going to do mm -hmm. and then some other time some other one will come up but um so I, I always come up with a lot of ideas with mountain biking how to make it easier last week I, was, I kind of talked a little bit about a, a pump like a bike pump and <laughs> I actually I so went mountain biking on Saturday and I got a flat tire and I had to deal with my stupid, <laughs> stupid mountain bike pump. And oh, I was just like, I was so irritated. So like, okay, this is why I need to design this new pump. Or somebody else can. If somebody else is out there and they want to talk about it, somebody, they want to just work on it. To me. <laughs> let, let's talk about it. Like, let's, let's make this happen, right? Yeah. Um, if, if it's not already in existence, by the time I'm out, I'm ready to, to work on it. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to make this thing happen. Cause I'm, I'm sick of dealing with that now. Of course I can carry those little CO2 pump fillers, but, uh, I don't, I don't really like those. I want to, I want a hand pump, but <laughs> so this new idea is a, a bike track, like it's like a universal bike track. There's a couple different kinds of bike tracks. There's hitch mounted ones, there's rooftop mounted ones. And then, um, and then you have bike racks that go into your garage. So I know that there's in some, this does exist in some form already, but like, a bike rack that I can mount into my hitch on my truck and then I can take it off of there I can put it on my wall in my garage and mount my bikes to it in my garage so I don't need a I don't need a bike rack in my garage and on my truck mm -hmm. it's the same one now as well as that sometimes maybe I want to mount it like okay I have a truck and I have a Subaru Forester so sometimes I want to mount it on top of the Subaru Forester yeah so if I could make a single bike rack that can mount on top of the Forester or it can go into the hitch and then when I'm not using it, I put it into my garage and I put, hook my bikes onto it. So it's holding my bikes in there as well. Mm -hmm. So try to, kind of like a universal folding bike rack. And then, and then at the same time, if I'm not using it, I want to be able to fold it up. And if I'm not going to use it in my garage, I want to be able to fold it up, lean it up against the wall or shove it into kind of a smaller area because mm -hmm. 
those hitch mount bike racks are they're huge they take up so much space so a lot of people end up just leaving them on their vehicles <laughs> <laughs> hanging there yeah because yeah. i i had i had one where this one hung from the back of the trunk for a car yeah so i'm trying to picture that with the because you know how the hinge mount and was using that same pivot for the roof mount or something um all i could think of too is having like modularity for the instead of having like a hook almost having something that you can mount on the bike that would either bolt on or or like screw on to the rack um yeah. that would give you some flexibility mm -hmm. that's yeah, so there's, I think there's a few different ways to attack it. And it, um, yeah, so this is one of the ideas. There's 1%. <laughs> yeah. I thought of it as 1%. Now I'll go sleep on it and I'll come back in a year and I'll, oh, it'll be all designed when I decide. I'm gonna <laughs> you know, that, that, all happens. In my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> that happens to me a lot. You said that, but a lot of the times I'll be working on something. It'll be pretty late. You know, it'll be like 10, 11. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to call it a day. I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh, I know exactly what to do. And I'll finish yeah. it in like 10 minutes. And it was taking me hours. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, it's awesome. So, and, and like you think about these different people, we think of like geniuses, basically, of historical times. Newton, for example, like he came up with, he came up with his laws. Mm -hmm. And, and Let's say I don't I don't know the, how how many years it took him to develop these things, but let's say it took him thirty years to develop his Newton's first law. Mm -hmm. Well, do you think he actually worked on it for eight hours a day for thirty years? No, he thought about it a little bit, and then he kind of put it to rest. Then he worked on something else. Mm -hmm. Then he'd bring it back up again. He'd work on it a little bit, and then in the meantime, his mind was always actively kind of working on it. Your subconscious mind is incredibly powerful, yeah. and utilize it right. So. <laughs> I was going to just add one thing too. And, um, you know, a lot of these ideas you mentioned, we just have to keep pumping them out. Um, a lot of the times one will connect to another one in the future. Be like, you know, remember we talked about this back then, like, what if we do this and this, and it could eventually lead to something a lot bigger. Um, yeah. But, um, I, that's all I have for today. How about you? Awesome. Yeah. So accountability, what are you going to do? What are you going to have for me next week? Um, I mean, as far as this, well, I want to put all the finishing touches on, on the website too and make sure everybody's able to jump on there well. But um, I want to look into that, um, that same chair, that, um, that lacy, lacy chair, I guess is what I'm calling it. But, you know, I've always, I've, always, I've always thought, you know, if I was handicapped, one of the main things, or on a wheelchair, I guess, one of the main things I would want to do is be able to stand up straight and walk around. Um, so I think if I can hit that market where, you know, it makes sense to do it for a computer chair, there's nothing that says that I can't go and implement that and, you know, give it to everybody who has um, a wheelchair and be like, here's like a cost effective um version of your wheelchair that's going to let you stand up um yeah. plus there's also the recreational side of everybody just being lazy <laughs> like you could literally be standing up like leaning back um moving you know yeah <laughs> i don't want that it's like what are they going to do like tell me i can't use vehicles what do you mean i'm walking <laughs> but um, right. yeah no um so please go ahead and visit us at um designkitchen.org and um as far as you your, your knife we, we should be expecting to see that 3d printed or what's your account yeah so i will i've got a couple more industrial design sketches which i have a, have a couple of them done already i'm going to produce a few more and i'll create a cad model and this is just going to be a static cad model so no no moving parts and and then 3d printed on top of that i'm going to work on that the podcast like intro outro and and we'll work on that together and, and i can't mm -hmm. i don't i don't think that will be ready to actually launch for the next podcast but it'll be coming because i want to add some graphics to to the top and to the bottom where the black yeah. box are with all our information so i got to figure that out too but yeah cool all right well we're learning we're yeah well, happen, so. 
<laughs> talk to you guys uh, next week and um, hope you guys are enjoying this and check us out at um, designkitchen.org. Uh, bye, everyone. <laughs>